All right, this should make for a good video. It did the last time I made one at this place. So what we've got going on is the indoor fans on the reach-in freezers. Not, not all of them are working. They had some ice build up, so they cleaned it out with water, and now they've got fans that ain't working. So either they pulled things loose or whatever. I'm not sure exactly which one's which. I'm pretty sure the one that they're having the most problem out of is that one over there. This one's got bubbles, but if you're not running fans, you're going to have bubbles. Can I crawl over here to this one and see what we got going on? Yeah, same thing. It's got bubbles there. Some there. These are known for leaking a little bit. So, I'm going to throw it in defrost and see what's going on. Not sure if that's all on one. That is the place that motor back in 19. on defrost see what happens so we've pumping down for a while here yeah I think it finally shut off and stayed off so it finally pumped down I'm gonna go in there and see what we got going on it's got the hippy hippy shakes going on there Heck yeah nice okay so the one that's on here because the lights are on it's the one that we didn't do it to. So you've got a fan out here, fan out there, one out there. And this is on another section. This is the one we just put into a defrost, which ended up shutting off by all these here. So we'll uh, put that one back on, throw the other one into defrost, focus on the one that's actually not working. So we just tested the clock. The clock's tracking time. So we'll go ahead and put this one into defrost. See how that does. Go inside, see what we can find out what's going on. All right, this thing ain't been in defrost, but for a couple, a couple seconds, and then just kicked out, and then just kicked back on. I'm not sure what in the world that was. Okay, from what I see, we have ice build up underneath the coil. And we got quite a bit of it behind the coil. There we go. If you don't get that out from behind the coil, it'll just continue to freeze up again and again and again. So we're gonna take all that out and melt all this all the way completely gone. You cannot leave any behind. Otherwise it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. It's way this thing works as the air is pulled down, crossed, up into the back and out. And that ice down there on the bottom is just going to start cutting airflow off and just continue to grow and grow and grow. And since the heaters are up here on the top of the panel, it will not melt that ice down there on the bottom. So you've got to completely manually do it by whatever means necessary, which usually is garden hose, which is what we got. So as soon as I get this other section cleared out there, we will get busy on that, but for right now we're going to start melting this out. Luckily this has happened before. He already had the hose ready to go, and this little expandle hose here actually is making it actually it's pretty nice. So we're uh, able to get down here. Start, uh, start melting this turd out. You can hear the elements not liking that very well. But, uh, this is a timed off defrost. The termination switches and stuff have been gone for a long time. This is a really old grocery store, so we uh, just make it run. As soon as we get this melted out, we'll check the refrigerant charge once everything's back down to temperature. And uh, we'll, see. we'll see how things are. There's a couple spots you can see where it's been leaking out there on the discharge line. It looks, like, looks like there's a little bit of leak there, and there's several spots that could be leaking here and there. So it's one of the ones where you just got to get it going. Let's make her happen. And just when you think you're going to make some progress, the drains here are problematic because things get down in them, like little stickers and price tags and things like that. So 
blow it out and hope that we don't get a bunch out here on the floor because that ends up happening because these drains are underneath here. The one that's going to really not be a lot of fun is that over there. You can see the ice is all the way up high. So this is going to take a little bit of time, unfortunately. So the slow, tedious work of that coil over there is done. Got everything out of the corners. Now we're working on this particular one also on that same compressor. The heater's working. The uh, heater, you can feel it. Problem is, if you don't get these things cleaned out properly, you block off the airflow, fans are running, but no air is going through the coil, and it just compounds and grows and grows. And you can see right here the ice dam that you got here on the back. That's the problem you have. And we are going to be here for a while because that's a good, good freaking inch or two. My drain should be down here somewhere in the middle trying to find it. I have a feeling that maybe my heater might have froze uh, or my heater may have went out. I believe I replaced the heater on here. I know I did from here out to the outside. We're going to melt us a little path in here and see if we can get that drain open first before I start flooding this thing. All right, so this is going to make most people laugh or cry. So here's the drain comes here. I replaced the drain heater over there on out. I don't think there's much of a drain heater here and you can see all the freaking ice underneath this cabinet. This is so bad. So bad. So let's see if we can get this freaking drain line opened up. We're making progress if you want to call it that. So luckily we're not leaking here but we are leaking down there a little bit. Um, I've got it to the point where I've got it pretty much cleaned out, but still not draining for crap. Trying to drain it out with the gallo gun. It, uh, I've been jamming some hot water through there. This is just a slow, tedious thing. It's coming out on the other side. I mean, at least the other one was. So, I mean, I know it's at least clear from here on through, or at least it should be. So it could be something in here in this particular spot right there. There's no heat tape at all in this particular one. Um, but all we'd be able to do on that one is just jam something down from the top. So I will probably figure out a way to do that when it's all said and done. And as you can see here, this is not idea. The conditions, there's the heat tape coming out. Problem is the people that did their parking lot paved it up nice and high. So you can see things are kind of coming out here. This ran this stainless steel rod down through there and I mean this just leaves room for crap to get in there. It's it's there's no good way. Everything about this is just difficult. So it's gonna keep on getting at it. I had to use the freaking torch there on the outside of the plastic. There's freaking ice all down in here from leakage. And uh must have got it freaking uh melted because now it's overflowing here unfortunately shooting out so hopefully it's starting to drain out the uh, back side here or outside outside the uh, building let's take a look here and see oh yeah look at that heck yes all right so now we got that part done and i will guarantee you it's going to have some heat tape going down through the center of it why it don't have one is beyond me. So next thing's gonna be to find a place to get the wiring in there because that's gonna be the next joy. So we'll finish melting some of this ice off. All of it actually. Got all this ice down here. Which is all the way up underneath the freaking motors. This is gonna take a while. Gonna take a while for sure. Kinda curious how much freaking came out the other side. So it's still draining and we're still getting crap done. This is not going very quickly because the water is uh, not hot anymore. Well, at least the other fan's now running. We uh, had to throw it into like the third defrost, fourth defrost. Gotta watch out for those uh, fins, they're a little sharp. Luckily it don't hurt too bad. You just bleed everywhere and then when you get water on it, it makes a hell of a mess. Yeah, so all my hot water's gone. But we've got all the crap from behind the coil. 
So now it's just a matter of getting it underneath these fans, which, like I said, it's going really, really slow because the water's playing cold now. It's it's up to about there, so yeah, it's, a, it's about, about an inch and a half, two inches deep, all underneath there yet. All right, so we pretty well just took all this crap apart, leaned that up, bent it up, whatever you want to call it, had one of the other guys help me and dug that crap out so now I go hook all this frame stuff back up got some more cuts war wounds I think that's about it on that so we'll end up uh, getting this thing back together and we'll juice it up it's four uh, a little after four on Friday and uh, so that's where we're at so we got our heat tape ready to go I got some zip cord there which is way bigger than I need it's 12 gauge and uh, got it uh, on there I shove it down the drain run it over to the defrost heaters and tie it on that way I was hoping to wire a constant um, but no good way to get into that case without drilling a hole and we're now uh, definitely getting later and the food is getting warmer so we've got to get this thing done and get out of here just finally got all the ice out um, so we're just about there. Then we're going to have to uh, check the uh, refrigerant here, which I guarantee is probably a little bit low. But uh, at least we know all the fans work and all the inside fans appear to be working. So just a little bit more to go. All right, so we got the freaking heat tape down the drain there. And it had to have made it at least over to the T here. Got it strapped to the bottom of the refrigerant line. Comes over. Ties into our junction box there, ties on with the big main heater that goes underneath the uh, coil there. I'm gonna get this thing back together and get her up and running. Um, I did put these little Wagos on here that I had left over from my true stuff, but unfortunately, the uh, like I said, no good way to get it up there. I did add a little bit of a um, an extension there to try to keep the water from overflowing, which worked fairly decent, but um, that's where we're at on it. So all right, so knock some of the ice off of it. Got the inside running. So far, the sight glass is full, but we'll see how that changes. So, gotta go back in, get some more shelving in. Okay, all the fans are running. Lights ain't on yet, so I'm hoping it's just a snap disc. I'm bringing it on, I gotta find one more of these little. Clips. There's one. These things are always great. Got one here, shelf that's not wanting to fit up quite right. <sighs> there we go. There we go. That should be just wonderful. Alright, all those fans work. Every single one of them. So, and we actually have good airflow. This door is about done had it. It don't shut on its own. If you're lucky it'll even, you gotta literally push it shut. So, got that. All right, well at this point, we got it all de-iced and uh, that drain thing goes out there through the back wall. So, hopefully this light comes on here in a minute. Got to just let her come down to temp some, double check that sight glass, and then we'll be done. Uh, reasoning for it, hard to say. Leaving doors open too long, not enough defrost. Um, defrost clock sticking, who knows. I mean, right now everything's checking out fine. It's been almost, I think, a year and a half or two years since I've had to do it, so I don't know if it's been done much since then. So, um, yeah, that's about it. So, yeah, it's just a... Yeah. None of it's on a rack, it's just literally on little individual uh, units, so nothing uh, super extravagant here. Just basically you got a coil on the back, airflow gets sucked down to the bottom, pushed through the coil, up the back wall, through all those uh, little prongs in the back, all the little holes, and there's no air curtain at all in here. This is a zero zone, and uh, refrigerant 12, so it tells you about how old this probably is. So it's, it's definitely um, got some age on it, but it's still running. And uh, these things are expensive. So before you go say, well, why don't they just buy brand new ones? Well, this is just a small town little grocery store here. And uh, 
just ain't the way it rolls. It's starting to come down in temperature. The sight glass is still full. Um, we're about 5.30 already, so um, I'm just going to come back for the lights. He's at least got his freezer running. Everything's back to normal. And then that way I can kind of check it when it's at temperature. Otherwise, I'm going to be here for another hour or two tracking wires down. These things have been converted from uh, freaking uh, T12 bulbs or whatever back in the day to LED and it's a wiring nightmare underneath there. 50 different relays and 15 different wire nuts leading to the next. It's uh, 6.05, finally wrapping it up. That's the joys of uh, getting stuck on something. And it's Friday, so anyhow, we're gonna go eat. Three days later. All right, so we're back. I noticed a little haze going on here in the windows and it's at temperature, so we're temperature, sight glass is full. I'm gonna check this one here in the middle. Looks like it's more than just a couple of them, so it just must be the seals that plumb let loose on these things. You can see the moisture there. They've got a little sensor down here on the bottom that I noticed right there, and it does a humidity sensing. And when it does sense humidity a certain level, it must bring on the heaters. So anyhow, we're gonna go out here and check this middle one. It uh, basically has, like I said, sight glass is half full or flow, so let's see what we got going on. So, as I mentioned, we're all back here. temperature but it's low and as it uh, colder weather you know it's going to show up worse now oh, look at that one of us full it's a little bit low too so we have to give them both a little squirt as old as these are it's not a real surprise so this one here only has two defrosts the other one down there i had put it at three and it seems to have been working pretty good with that so we're going to try three here with this one especially with all the reach in action going on these uh i don't think it's in too extreme especially with summer coming along humidity going up these are the freezers so i'm gonna add one to that we're gauged up we're taking a look we're adding some refrigerant to it and uh when i was scanning it for leaks while it was a pump down i had a little bit of a signal here on the uh, valve now that it's running you can see that it's leaking, so we definitely got a leak here on the solenoid uh, seal there, which is not a real uncommon thing, especially if it's an old solenoid seal from back in the day. They have a tendency to leak once they get that other type of oil, POE oil, under versus mineral that was probably originally on this thing. This thing is originally uh, 502, I would suspect. So. We're going to go ahead and get it uh, charged up and see where we're at and then uh, see if we can tighten that up. If not, we'll have to get a new seal for it. I resprayed it after tightening it, which I got a pretty good turn out of it. It does not seem to be leaking anymore, from what I can tell. Here we go. If it is, it's very micro now compared to before. low which this thing holds quite a bit it's got uh, I think two big old freaking canisters underneath here can't see them usually there's two big old tubes underneath there that holds quite a bit ain't got any documentation or anything no writing of what was there I mean you can tell how long it's been here from back in the day when it was HP62, which was the scientific name or proprietary name from DuPont before they went to Coil Four. So this coils are pretty dirty. Got to get those cleaned out, which I don't have any water anywhere near here. So. All right, so we're washing it out here with some hot water, which, believe it or not, that thing is kicking it right out the other side. You can see the chunks of crud. It's making it through there. The uh, yeah, there's some big old gunky junk. Yeah, this thing's packed full of crud, and these little pocket hoses, I can't believe it's got enough of them to reach all the way around here. It's probably about 250 foot, 300 foot. 
and uh, it, uh, this is what I used the other day to clean out the evaporator section. So we're kind of doing it both ways here. It's, it's a total mess back here. That's where the knee pads come in handy. You can see just from shooting what we were shooting through that some of this is not completely gotten wet, so we're kind of working it up and down. And get, kind of working it up and down, trying to get all that through there. That is a thick coil. Definitely a thick coil. It's pretty wide, so I mean, generally I've noticed if you wash it, wash it, you wash it, if you wash it properly, you don't necessarily have to use the con coil cleaner and stuff like that. I mean, there's times where I like using it, but not every day you really need it. it just depends. Just depends. Everybody's got their own preferences. I'll use it when I need to. So we got them both cleaned out. You can see daylight right through those things. Really good now. Sorta. Of. Yeah, you kinda can. It, there's no light back here because it's inside the wall. But um, it's uh, doing a lot better than what it was. You can see what uh, our pressures are running now that we got actual air going through it. 240s. So we're not too far off. It's still drying, obviously fan there is not running. So the other thing I worry about with the on coil cleaner or any kind of cleaner or whatever, getting it into windy to the motor. I'm not going to tear all these motors out to do it. And it splashes all inside there and the next thing you know a day or two later you lose the motor. So and these ones here they're really difficult to uh, Yeah, we got it. I try not to use that coil cleaner on ones like this with that wide. There's just really not much reason to, but you know, it's definitely a thick coil. So we're gonna keep on seeing where our sight glass is at and then uh, hopefully get out of here for long.